Member Statements. I recognize the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, everyone. The hardworking people of Etobicoke Lakeshore are always optimistic, and now with the warmer weather, the tulips are, are popping up and it's allergy season's in full bloom, and the upbeat spirit I have encountered over the past several months have absolutely been phenomenal. In March, it was National Pharmacy Appreciation Month, and I had the opportunity to visit numerous pharmacists in our community to express my appreciation. In the end of March, I also met with the Earth, Earth Rangers who were visiting Norseman Middle School, a group of young individuals dedicated to preserving area species and habitats. That same day, I was able to drop by our 15th Annual Seniors Health and Wellness Fair at the amazing Franklin Horner Community Centre, and this year's theme was Boosting Brain Health and Memory. During this past week, my colleague, the Minister of Education, stopped by St. Joseph at Cathedral Catholic School to meet with staff and students and welcome over 250 Ukrainian students who've enrolled since June 2022, and I'm pleased to welcome to Etobicoke. I also had the opportunity this week to visit our Women's Habitat Outreach Center with my friend, the Associate Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunity. The Habitat does such wonderful work to, see, to serve and protect vulnerable women in our community. On April 13th, I was honored to attend the Haven on the Queensway ribbon cutting to cut the ribbon for the new walk-in freezer to better serve those in need. I just want to thank everybody in our community for the work they do every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Normally, I'm not compelled to discuss federal politics in this place. We've got enough to do in Ontario. But I rise this morning, Speaker, to register my serious concerns with Mr. Pierre Poiliev, the federal leader of the opposition. In recent months, he's been putting a maple glaze on Trumpism. He's used his platform to attack journalists, attempting to hold him accountable. As Ruth Arthur from the Toronto Star has said, Mr. Poiliev is not just working the refs, he's trying to replace them. Speaker, there's always a tension between members of the media and elected officials. We interact with each other while doing very different jobs. Journalists work hard to report stories they believe are in the public interest, and we work hard as elected officials with the media to advocate for our constituents and broadcast messages we believe are important. We may not like how our words are reported sometimes, Speaker, and journalists may not appreciate how their questions are deflected or spun. But still, we both try to do our jobs, and the tension between us is critical for Canadian democracy. But the moment you employ disinformation to question somebody else's integrity, that is the moment you cross a big red line. It is the moment I believe you insult the democratic traditions built by our grandmothers and grandfathers in this place. So, Speaker, through you, I call to Mr. Poiliev, I call to all members of this House, all elected officials everywhere, to do better to respect each other as we do the work that we need to do for Canadians, and to never cross that red line. Order. Order. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning. I am pleased to rise in the House today to recognize and celebrate Logan Stotts, an outstanding singer-songwriter and musician. Born in Oshweekin on the territory of the Six Nations of the Grand River, Logan started to write songs and perform music in his teens in and around the Brantford Brant community. In 2018, the Mohawk Nation artist was chosen from 10,000 hopeful contestants vying for a spot on the musical competition show, The Launch. Before 1.4 million viewers, Stotts won, and that ushered the breakthrough that would lead him to Nashville and Los Angeles with his single and its amazing speaker, The Lucky Ones. His song, Speaker, would hit number one in Canada on iTunes. Stas was also part of a documentary series and uses his talent to bring awareness on Indigenous issues across Canada. In the years from 2018 to today, Stas has come home, making the intentional decision to reroute at Six Nations of the Grand River. Last month, Speaker Logan Stotts won the prestigious Society of Composers, Authors and Music Publishers of Canada TD Indigenous Songwriter Award. All this using borrowed equipment at Stotts' apartment and a recording studio on the Six Nations territory. I quote, My nation and my community are in every chord I play and every note I sing. They've saved me. And with those words, Logan, we celebrate your accomplishments and we thank you. Congratulations.
order. 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 You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't interrupt the proceedings of the House. I refuse to be part of your whitewash, happy Indian rhetoric. We are not happy. We are suffering. We are thirsty. We are missing. We are murdered. How long? Resume member statements. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you very much, Speaker. Last week, our community mourned the loss of a wonderful, award-winning poet, author, and journalist Iqbal Hassan. A creative writer, a storyteller, Iqbal Hassan loved writing poetry. His literary works explored the complexities of the human experience and often dealt with themes of love, loss, displacement, and identity. Through his words, he talked about his roots within his motherland, as well as the struggles of day-to-day -day life as an immigrant. In one of his interviews, he described the loneliness after leaving one's birthplace, saying, and I quote, Speaker, he really had a way with his words. Iqbal Hassan's contribution to Bengali literature both in Canada, Bangladesh and around the globe has been significant with over 50 published works to his name. It is a testament to his talent that he was recognized with the prestigious Saeed Aliullah Waliullah Award by the Bangla Academy in 2014. I had the opportunity to get to know him over the past years. In fact, he sat right here in the members gallery just a few years ago when then Percy MP, when we when we passed then MPP Percy Hadfield's bill to establish the Poet Laureate of Ontario. He was filled with joy seeing such admiration for poetry by our province. The passing of poet Iqbal Hassan has left a void in the literary world. My thoughts and prayers are with the family, friends, and loved ones. He will remain an integral part of the Bengali literary community, and his legacy will continue to inspire future generations of writers. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Members may take their seats. Member statements. Member for Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. As you know, Ontario is one of the largest automotive producers in North America, home to world-leading vehicle assembly plants, parts manufacturers, and research centers that have been meeting the needs of international customers for more than 100 years. Ontario is the only place in North America where five major automakers build their vehicles, including Honda, Toyota, Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, and soon to be added, Volkswagen's first overseas battery manufacturing plant. Speaker, Canada's auto sector supports nearly 500,000 workers, contributes six $16 billion annually to, to Canada's gross GDP and is one of the country's largest exporters. Ontario's auto supply chain is comprised of over 700 parts firms, over 500 dual uh, tool, dye and uh, mold makers and over 300 connected and autonomous companies. Speaker, this is why with a bright future ahead for our provincial automotive sector, thanks to the leadership of Premier Ford, I'm pleased to make a member's statement celebrating Ontario's automotive heritage. One of my constituents, William Armstrong, is the Ontario Director of the National Association of Automobile Clubs of Canada, and he's championing an effort to declare the month of July as Automotive Heritage Month in Ontario, and July 14 as Collector Car Appreciation Day. Whether we're looking back to Ontario's rich automotive history, or ahead to new investments today, including the recent announcement that GM will build the next generation of EV motors in St. Catharines. Let's celebrate our important automotive sector and recognize July as Automotive Heritage Month. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for um, uh, Hamilton Centre. 
Hamilton. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. It's been about four weeks since I had the honor of being elected in Hamilton Center as the MPP, but we're not taking anything for granted. We're getting our constituency office set up as of May 1st, and we had, we had our first office drop-in at a local business named Rooney just last week. We've also been working really hard on constituency work, and I've been doing uh, learning about constituency work all last week. We also had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to attend Anissa Holmes fundraiser, knowing that there's about five days left of the holy uh, religious uh, time Ramadan, uh, supporting local Muslims who are uh, protecting women who are facing domestic violence and we had the opportunity to connect there and to talk to them about their concerns around funding. Uh, we're taking the time to get to know people in the riding and I'm super, super excited to, to announce that we will be set up in May. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's uh, my pleasure to rise here today to recognize the Arthur Vipers hockey team on their OAA U18LL Elite Division Championship victory. It was a hard-fought best out of three series against the Mount Forest Rams. The first game saw Arthur taking, uh, taking it with a 4-3 win in overtime with goals from Parker Coffney, Adam Cruel, Connor Schmidt, who can't score the game winner speaker. Mount Forest bounced back in the second game, winning 2-0 and forcing a game three. Arthur came out strong and fast in the final game, making for a hard-fought but resounding 5-0 victory to close out the series. Goals were scored by Simon Livingston, Parker Coffey, and Aiden Hope, speaker. Connor Schmidt, Nate House, Wyatt Schill, and Owen McDougall all provided assists. And obviously, Speaker Wyatt Smith and Braden Van Donegan stood their ground uh, as goalies, keeping uh, the puck out of the net. Speaker, this capped off a fantastic season for the Vipers, winning 27 games with one loss and bringing them to a record 50 wins, one loss, 248 goals, and 76 goals against in their last two seasons, Speaker. I want to personally congratulate the entire team on winning the Elite Division Championships in the past two years, Speaker. And as their coaches said, all three lines focused on doing the small things fast and with intention. Congratulations, Arthur Vipers. Thank you very much. Member statements? The member for Cambridge. Mr. Speaker, this, mor this morning I want to speak about the tremendous success of the Cambridge Memorial Hospital Foundation. Established in, back in 1982, the foundation has transferred almost $19 million to the Cambridge Memorial Hospital for capital equipment and education. This hard work and success of the foundation has allowed the hospital to provide the best quality of care to the people of my riding. Recently, supporters of the Hospital Foundation gathered for a springtime in Paris gala where they raised an incredible $380,000. These funds will be put towards a Spotlight MRI, a $5 million campaign to purchase this new machine. To date, a total of $1.6 million has been raised. The generosity of the Foundation donors allows the Cambridge Memorial Hospital to purchase its its first uh, MRI back in 2012. It was a game changer. Not only could MRIs be accessed at home, but wait times were also reduced. Uh, over the five, last five years, the hospitals averaged 9,000 scans a year, which is amazing. As our community continues to grow, a new MRI is required to meet the demand. The Spotlight MRI campaign will feature many more public fun or funding uh, events coming up in the, in the future months and I encourage my uh, people of my riding to support the good work for the Hospital Foundation. To the staff and volunteers at the Hospital Foundation, both past and present, I thank you for your hard work and dedication. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Last week, Ford Motor Company announced details of its $1.8 billion investment to transform the Oakville Assembly Complex, where I worked for 31 years, into a North American hub for manufacturing electric vehicles. Beginning in the second quarter next year, by retooling the existing assembly building, three body shops, a paint facility, Ford will be ready to produce electric vehicles beginning in 2025, two years faster than a completely new facility. The new Oakville Electric Vehicle Complex will also include a new 407,000 square foot battery plant to manufacture battery packs that will be installed into electric vehicles right here in Ontario. This is, will support thousands of well-paying jobs in a more sustainable plant. That's great news for my friends at Unifor Local 707. I'm looking forward to seeing them next month to celebrate their 70th anniversary. Speaker, as the Minister of Economic Development said four years ago, economists expected investment of $300 billion across the global electric vehicle industry, but nothing in Ontario. Today, we are attracting over $17 billion, and I want to thank the Minister and the Premier for everything they're doing to ensure that the cars and the batteries of the future are built right here in Ontario using Ontario minerals by Ontario workers at the Ford plant in Oakville and across the province of Ontario. Thank you. Well done. Uh, point of order, the member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As you know, the OHL playoffs have begun. There was a gentleman's bet between myself and the member from Sudbury. The Peterborough Peets defeated the Sudbury Wolves in four games. So to honor the bet, I'm asking for unanimous consent for the member for Sudbury to wear the Peterborough Peets jersey during question period. Oh. oh. <laughs> member for Peterborough Kawartha is seeking to humiliate the member for Sudbury by forcing him to wear a hockey sweater for a team he doesn't support. Agreed? Agreed. <laughs> that concludes our member statements for this morning.